thanks so much for joining me. Welcome to the song series. Now, before I dedicate my song to you and to your sign, you know, the song that I believe captures the energy of your sign, before I do that, I'm going to take you through our astrology wheel so that we can see where we are in the zodiac. I'm just going to write you on here. So where did we begin our journey? Actually, I'm going to write Aries on here now too, because we're going to speak about Aries a little bit towards the end. So where have we started our journey? And as you know, those of you who have been following me through the song series, you know that I've been running the wheel around a certain way. I've seen this wheel done in so many ways. I've seen it started from 12 o'clock down and I've seen all kinds of things so look I'm running it this way for the teaching purposes of the song series we started here in Aries springtime and we're going this way around we've come all the way through to Libra so we are at a very exciting part of the zodiac I really really think that things get very interesting down here through winter. It gets really interesting. Uh, and you're going to see, you're going to see, I think, who knows, maybe I might be more animated throughout the next half of this entire series because it does get a little bit mad down here. You know, it is fall after all, and I've been using the American term fall, which is kind of the descent into winter, the descent into madness, all kinds of things. The light is less and we have to come together more here. It's really, really interesting. So, you know, do join me for the rest of the series if you're interested. Mind you, we've had a lot of fun in summer, summertime. Uh, summer's been wonderful. The fall gets very, very interesting. So you guys kick off that exciting journey into the next half of the zodiac. We're going to do a quick recap on your sign, just the fundamental basics, and then I'm going to get into your song and explain why I've dedicated it to you. So you are ruled by Venus. Your element is air. You are symbolized by the scales. And your motto is I weigh. Everybody's got a particular motto. You know, Aries had I am, Taurus had, I'm trying to remember, I have, Gemini was I communicate, so on and so forth. We go throughout the zodiac and you guys are I weigh, right? Uh, you, your sign rules, the seventh house, seventh house is all about the other. Okay, so when we were here in Aries of I am, very much the individual, you know, number one. Uh, I am number one, I am, it's just all about me. Uh, I'm not saying that Aries are like that. You can click on my Aries video and see. Uh, we've all got this, you know, we need to have this energy and we've all got all, a bit of all of these, really. Uh, especially if you study the Vedic system. That's why I don't particular, particularly associate myself with any one sign, because I know I'm a little bit of all of them. But you guys being opposite to here, you're all about the other. Other. I really have to get a new pen. I know, I'm, I'm ordering some more refined pens very soon. You are all about the other. This is the part, this in fact is, the entire second half is more so about the other people, about group consciousness about coming together because the light is less. We have to come together, okay? Uh, the top half there from Aries to Virgo was very much about the individual. Um, and now we're coming into more collective energy here, which is why I think this is really a really exciting part of the Zodiac. So now Libra, what song did I choose for you? You know, it was really interesting when I was doing the research for this series, I actually found it very difficult to find your song and I was really wrecking my brains. Yours was almost the song that I thought, oh no, they're all, I've got them all except this one's 
proving to be very, very challenging to me. And then after looking at loads of different options, when I came to this one, I was like, oh, I'm really happy. Uh, you know, this, this just completed it for me. And uh, your song, without further ado, is You Get What You Give by The New Radicals. It's a really cool song. I'm pretty sure it came out in the 90s. I vaguely remember buying the CD single a very long time ago. I don't think anyone buys CD singles anymore, but that's definitely one of the things I used to do when I was a teenager. So this song, you get what you give. I mean, even just in the title, right? Let's say you haven't even clicked on the song yet. This is describing what happens in your sign. You know, you get what you give. You know, you get what you give. Quid pro quo. You know, this exchange. Is it fair? Is it balanced? Um, you're very welcome at this point to pause this video, click on the link below, listen to your song. And this is actually one where you really will need to watch the music video because it matches very much. And you can watch and listen to your song and come back for my analysis, or you can listen to my analysis and then go and enjoy your song. So if we take a look at some of the lyrics, I think we're going to do that before I describe what's happening visually. Yeah. The notable lyrics. He starts singing, wake up kids, we've got the dreamer's disease, age 14, we got you down on your knees, so polite, you're busy still saying please. It was that line that took my mind elsewhere to start thinking about Mahatma Gandhi. And I started thinking about him because this line is so polite, you're busy still saying please. You know, in the first two lines as well, wake up kids, we've got the dreamer's disease. If you look at his life and what he believed in and what he fought for and what he did for a nation, it was just that, you know, he was, he was saying to a nation, wake up. You know, and you're so polite, you're busy still saying please to what? To your oppressors, you know? Come on, let's wake up and let's see. You know, let's try and look at this exchange that's going on here. Is it fair? You know, you give so much. Are you getting anything in return? What are you getting in return? You know, and he said that to a nation. Um, and he came up into my mind because he is a very famous Libran. And I'm just going to open his chart now. Uh, even in the Western system, he is a classic Libran. And so he's very much born at the time, you know, this kind of fall type time. And let's take a look at him in the Vedic system, which is the sidereal Vedic system, which is the one that I use. And my goodness, yes, he's got his Ascendant and three planets in Libra, in his first house. So he's a classic Libran, a really good example here. And, you know, I think these uh, lyrics capture the energy. You know, these song lyrics capture the energy of, of a great figure in history as well, who also captured the Libran energy, right? So there's a real justice component, which we're going to get into, I think, further down. Uh, it says here, when the night is falling, where are we? Fall. And that's why I've kept this word in here. You know, even though I'm based here in the United Kingdom and I grew up in Australia where I learnt UK English, uh, I am opting for the American word fall here because when the night is falling, you know, when the light is becoming less, you know, we're going into dark territory here, right? So when the night is falling, you cannot find the light. You feel your dreams are dying. Hold tight. Okay, those lyrics are describing exactly this movement down here. It's, it's mapping out the territory. It's saying, we are going here, people. So you got to get ready, right? It's fantastic. I really like this song. I think this has uh, been quite an apt choice. Which I'm not saying that, I mean, it's whatever angels guided me to this song. Seriously, I, I just deliver the news. <laughs> so um, let's continue with the lyrics. So we've got 4 a.m. We ran a miracle mile. Now, 
I do think they're talking about Chicago there. I have been down the Miracle Mile. Uh, I once had to go to Chicago on some kind of business trip a long time ago and yeah, I got to experience the Miracle Mile of shops. Uh, that's, that's what I remember. I, I didn't buy very much, but uh, it was nice to go down there nonetheless. It says here, we're flat broke, but hey, we do it in style. The bad rich, God's flying in for your trial. That's a really interesting line there. And this is where we get into the justice component of what's going on in this part of the zodiac. Definitely we have lawyers come out of uh, the sixth house of Virgo. So the sixth house of Virgo definitely have lawyers come out of this area here. But very much um, law and justice is here too. What's the difference between the two? I was thinking about that earlier today. And for the sixth house, I think that's more where individuals want to draw the line. So you know when there's like an issue happening in society, um, say for example, I'll, I'll pick one that's happening now. I, I don't have particularly huge opinions on any of this, but people are talking about pay gap and things like that. And there will be people on both sides of an argument um, who want to draw the line. And they're arguing about the line. Where do you draw the line? Do you draw it here? Do you draw it here? That sort of activity is more Virgoan. And I think um, with Libra, it, it's, yes, it's law, but it's more kind of justice in a humanitarian sort of a way. And I definitely see that there are two signs where humanitarians come out of. I see them coming out of Libra, and I see them coming out of the 11th house Aquarius. These two, for me, are big humanitarian kind of signs. And if you look at the visuals of what's happening in this film clip, we've got, well, firstly, it's in a mall, which is really cool because Venus, she loves going to the mall. You know, she loves shopping. She loves quality goods. She loves buying things. So that's perfect. Uh, but we've got this scene of, you know, they, they have these animals caged up and I think they free all the animals. And I think they take the bankers and the people in the suits and they put them in the cages. So there's this real kind of revolutionary aspect to this song. There's justice. There's collective group sort of justice going on here. Again, it's that weighing up of what's right and what's wrong. Um, you know, it's that you get what you give. There are karmic implications here too, you know. Um, yeah, I really like, I really like this film clip. I think it really works. The lyrics go on. It says this whole damn world could fall apart. You'll be okay. Follow your heart. You're in harm's way. I'm right behind. Now say you're mine. You're in harm's way. To me, that's kind of, again, that descent into winter, the descent into the depths. You know, I can, I can kind of see that there. So if we take a look at what's great about your sign, Libra, there's so many things. There are so many things that are just absolutely wonderful about your sign and you are a very essential part of the zodiac. Um, you know, you're there for the other. Very much, sometimes at the expense of yourself. So that is something that you're going to have to look at, right? That is important. You've got to look at what are you receiving? What are you getting? Yes, you give a lot, Libra. You give so much, but you've got to look after yourself too, okay? That's really important. Uh, Librans are humanitarians at heart. Got a note here. We're always thinking of others and working for others. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's this point that I've just made. Um, fairness is at the core of your values. Absolutely. Values, again, and those weighing scales, where do they come from? And I think they are the merchant's weighing scales. You know when you go, we've got outdoor farmers markets here, and some of them use these kind of scales where they measure things and weigh things, but this is in olden days when I think they would weigh, I don't know, did they weigh golds or coins or something? And the, 
I'm not sure, but they were weighing things basically in markets using these kind of merchant type scales. So for me, Libra also governs business as well and commerce too, which is another reason why that song works so well, featured in a more. Um, you've got this natural energy to make things right in the home, at work, on the world scene. Absolutely. There is a public component to the seventh house. And definitely in Vedic astrology, when we look for fame and things like that, spotlight, or will you be on the world stage? Two houses I definitely look at are the seventh house, and because that's the seventh house of masses for me, not only the other, but I include masses as well. I think many people do. And there's also the tenth house. So I do look at both the seventh and the tenth uh, to see you know, how large an impact are you going to make. So as with every sign, I've been giving a tip for each sign. And if I had a tip for you, Libra, what would that be? Well, it would be to step into your polar opposite, which as we know is Aries. I'm just going to put a star here. My pen seems to be running out. I'm going to have to get another pen. Take a leaf out of the book of Aries. And if you want to get some inspiration for that, you're very welcome to watch the Aries video. But I can tell you just quickly right now, to take a leaf out of the Aries book, all you have to do is focus a little bit more on yourself and cultivate a strong, healthy sense of self. So who are you? And no one really knows who they are. So that is a big, 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 deep philosophical question that I, I think everybody who incarnates spends their whole lifetime learning more about who we are on a deep level and figuring out who we are and all that kind of thing. But for you in particular to balance yourself out, you will need to spend some time contemplating who are you? What are you about? What things do you love? What, what things do you dislike? What about your opinions on things, you know? And I think Librans can be very open-minded, very open-minded and very accepting of so many different things. And, and Librans are often also very much the ones who can hold contradictory thoughts in their mind at the same time. And they're not particularly biased and not hugely judgmental. So spend some time in Aries and think, well, what do I like and what can't I stand? And who am I and what am I into? And, and, and spend a little bit more time um, focusing on yourself, which, you know, perhaps, perhaps you don't do enough of. So it's just a little bit of food for thought there, but you truly are a very much loved part of the Zodiac Libra. And I hope you realize that. I don't know if you hear that enough, but you're very much loved, you're very much needed, you're very much essential to all of humanity. I think you know that though, deep down, you know, being the humanitarians that you are. But it's nice to hear it once in a while, isn't it? So thank you, Libra, for all that you do. Thank you for balancing the energies here on Earth. And if you would like, you're very welcome to come and join me in the next sign which is Scorpio or you can head over into Aries and get some inspiration from what they're all about but otherwise I'd just like to thank you for stopping by and perhaps I'll see you in Aries or Scorpio. Scorpio is next, perhaps I'll see you there. <laughs>